Hey, Adam, welcome. Hey, Anissa, welcome. Um, welcome, Art. Welcome, Florence. Welcome, Gilda, Jason, Judy, Casey, Kenneth, Mohammed, Neil, Phil, Aussie, Richard. Welcome, y'all. And uh, very excited to have you on the line with us. Right, uh, we're ready whenever you are, um, Stan. Yeah, you went too fast, man. <laughs> that again. <laughs> Anybody want to say hi? I'll unmute you if you want to say hi while we're giving Stan a, a couple of minutes here to uh, uh, to uh, get himself set up. Anybody? So RC's got a story for us. RC had a nice email today that that some questions. But can we do RC next? You want, you want you want to do him first or do him next? Well, next. Okay. Uh, let me see here. I uh, I see Judy raise raise her hand. Judy, did you want to uh, say something or you want to try to unmute you? Hey, yes, Judy, are you there? Yes, I'm wondering how I sound. I'm trying to use my speakers, except I'm hearing the sound through the computer. So is there a lot of feedback when I'm talking? Nope. You sound just perfect. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, fine. Well, that that's all I needed to know. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye -bye. All right. All right, RC. I'll unmute you now, buddy. Uh, can all you right. hear me? Yep, I can hear you Can now. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine, Tim. Uh, I had a great week, busy week, nevertheless, but uh, things got into high gear here for me. That's good. So what changed? What happened this week? Uh, I had a sign flex option, and I I did some uh, put some signs up this weekend, and uh, at the tenant who was supposed to vacate the properties and the seller wanted me to do a owner financing or lease option, whoever comes next. Mm -hmm. But it so happened that when the seller saw me, put, I mean, when the buyer saw me put the sign on the property, she changed her mind and wanted to inquire how I, she can do this uh, lease option or owner financing. Cool. Perfect. So that's how it got started. And then uh, uh on such, it took about a day or so before I got hold of her, got some details, and that's when I sent you some information. And then the buyer got involved and wanted to know how how, how we do this, and he had a lot of questions. So uh, when I eventually contacted the uh, the buyer today, it turned out she was not able to afford the payments that the buyer was looking for in the flex option. And it was a blessing in disguise. I think she was not qualified for the lease option type of deal. I might have been setting up her to fail eventually in the future and lose her uh, option fee because she wanted to only come up with six hundred dollars a month uh, for lease uh, for the lease payment. Oh, uh, and the buyer was uh, the seller was looking for eight hundred and fifty, and that's the market rent in that area. It's a very good area. How much is she currently? Uh, how much is the tenant currently paying for rent now? Eight fifty. Oh, okay. That's. And she was having. I think she was having a tough time because her husband is unemployed and she's the only wage earner right now. And she told me that's the reason she's moving out. The eight fifty is too much of a burden for her. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If she can't pay her, you know, her rent payment, she's not going to be able to pay the the right financing one. So. Okay. So I made a quick decision yesterday and sent the uh, buyer, uh, uh, the seller rather, uh, an information like it, this may not be a good tenant a prospect for lease option. So I told him that I'll continue to market his property because I have about 20 more days on uh, on the flex option. Uh, right. He had me. Uh, he gave me the green signal to continue marketing. But what happened was somebody else saw this sign and called me, and I got another flex option now from this one. Oh, that's awesome. Good job. And today I spent three hours. Uh, so that lady who is currently renting, she's been renting the property for two years. And she gave me the contact. She told me she's very interested in buying the property, and I told her that I'm not going to do anything until I talk to the owner of the property. So yesterday she gave me all the details, 
And today I spent three hours with the owner of the property, and I got a flex option to him. I had to go to his house because he was a very handicapped elderly man, uh-huh. and he was barely able to remember the details of his property. So I drove up there today and spent three hours uh, filling out the seller questionnaire, patiently talking to him. He had his uh, tubes in his uh, nose with the ox- for the oxygen, oh, no. and he wanted to... So his situation is he's making two payments on the current house he's living in and the rental property. And he's got a good tenant. She pays on time and $750 a month. And she's very interested in buying the property. She failed to qualify for a conventional uh, loan, I believe. She's been trying to buy it for the last six months. Mm-hmm. So it didn't happen. So she wanted me to uh, tell uh, tell him how I could help her buy it, but uh, I wanted to get all the details from the owner today. And right. he was very open to owner financing and lease yeah. option. Whatever I can help him, he wants to be out of this property as soon as he can. That's and he, told, he, he emphasized that he has no problem with the current tenant. She's been paying on time for uh, two years, and he's been owning the property. He's got a 30-year fixed, mm-hmm. and he did not have any details about his mortgage uh, so he gave me the uh, phone number and the contact information of his mortgage company. So I think I may have to get it from them, all the details I need. Yeah, you're going to need to get him to sign a release, an authorization to release information okay. before, before they will talk to you. But uh, right. one, another way you can also do it, um, do it next time is ask him for his last uh, mortgage statement. I see, okay. Yeah. If you have his last mortgage statement, then all of the uh, mortgage information will be on there. But uh, but yeah, no big deal. Just get him to sign a release of uh, an authorization to release information, which is in the forms disk there, and uh, you'll be good to go. But uh, good job, man! I'm so proud of you. Right, and I thank you. And I think uh, Tim, there must be some good equity in this property because he's been making payments on this uh, rental property for 15 years. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of equity in there then. Right, but I don't know the details until I get the mortgage statement. So that's where I was today. I got the flex option, and I have called and set an appointment uh, with the buyer now because I don't know any other details other than the attempt she made a call and expressed interest to buy the property. Right. So I'll be talking to her sometime tomorrow. She hasn't returned my call yet. Okay. So that's okay. where I stand with this uh, new flex option. It, it it was a spin-off from my previous deal, so it was a bla- even though that deal kind of fizzled out, but it kind of spawned another deal from it. Well, that's totally how it works. independently. Right, and 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 that's exactly how it works, and that's why I tell people all the time. It's like, you know, don't worry if you know even if you don't make your money on that first flex option uh, um, house because. Once you start marking that very first house, you're going to end up with more deals, more buyers for that neighborhood. And I so, see. yeah, and, and so that that's just, you know, that's just the nature of the business. And so that's a, you know, that's a very good job that you you did that. I'm so proud of you. That's, uh, that's really cool. Thank you. And then on Sunday, uh, this was based on, uh, you know, you were recommending trying to get realtors on the team. So I started this on December the 11th. And finally, kind of slowly, uh, it took shape. On Sunday, I had a meeting with a broker in Memphis in their office. And and she was very interested, and she was already familiar with all the details of what I was talking about. But uh, uh, their partners uh, who were in the office, they were very skeptical about this flex option. They All the time, they were harping about it. It's not legal. But she knew what I was talking about and requested I send them a copy of a blank flex option, which I did yesterday. And they they were okay with it now. That's good. Okay. And she's very interested. She told me, I don't know how this will work, but I was very excited when I had her on my on my side. She said, uh, I told her that I'll be able to pay 25 to 30% of my down payment as a compensation. It may not be like a full commission, and we will make up for the volume. And she's specifically interested in it in this 8K tax tra- credit strategy, she told me, you bring the uh, uh, seller's uh, property, I will put it on the MLS. Okay. 
that's how she wanted to do the marketing and she was and she she was specifically gave me a zip code that she wants to start with and that right. is a very nice area the even the neighboring trick, zip codes in Mem- the, Memphis are very good the only trick with her putting on the MOS is that is that there, is that we're going to have to end up or you're going to end up having to pay commission to the uh, the agent that's going to bring a buyer and so, I, see. So I told her, uh, she told me, uh, I, I made it very clear to them, this is not a commission type of deal. I don't know how she's going to do it. And she, I, she was okay with my uh, uh, statement of that I'm going to pay, for, how I get paid and how she would get paid is from the down payment from my buyers. And it will be somewhere in the range of 25 to 30%. So she was okay with it. And I don't know how she's going to use the MLS to market the properties. Yeah, you might so. want to be clear with her on that because... You know, if, okay. When she puts it on the MOS, that means that that means that you know you you're gonna be uh, paying a, a real a commission to uh, to uh, whichever agent that's gonna bring a buyer, and so. I think uh, it was her sister. She's the buyer's agent, and uh, her sister, twin sister, actually, she's the one who is doing the listing side of it, and right, her right. husband. So it's right. like a family business. Right, I I understand that, but what what I'm talking about is that uh, it's one thing if she has buyers, it, it, you know, in her network. If that's the case, she wouldn't even need the the ML, MLS. I but see. once you put a property on the MLS, you have the listing agent that must be paid, and you have the buyer's agent that must be paid. Because okay, right. when you put on the MLS, some other real estate agent is going to bring a buyer. I see. And so how are you going to pay the other real estate agent? I see. I was not exactly clear how she was going to do it. The only thing I made sure was I made the statement how I get paid and what I was willing to pay her, and she was okay. But I will follow up on what you're asking to clarify. I'll do that. I'll follow up on that. Right. Yeah, because you don't want to end up, you know, barely making any money on the deal by the time you paid out both agents uh, right. the commission. Right, right. Uh, the only thing I got excited was because uh, I don't have to be driving too many places to get these leads. Once I get the buyer and get it started, they can help me coordinate and complete the deal. If I if if, if I can end up paying them 25% or 30% like you recommended, you know, when you were right. suggesting a real a realtor on your team. Right. Right. So that yeah. is how I was looking at. I I will I will clarify further. I appreciate your uh, suggestions here. Right. Yeah. I mean, we want we want agents to work on our team, but we want them to be the one that market for the buyers. You know, we right. Don't want, right. Yeah. We 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 don't want we don't want them to just put it on the MOS and expect some other agents to bring a buyer. Okay. That, I'll that, verify that, that. Yeah. There'll be too many parties involved, and then there's not enough profit to go around. Right. Right. I I will let them know. I I told them. Uh, how you guys are very successful with this flex option strategy. Um, uh, so they, they were not, uh, at first they were all very skeptical, but uh, eventually after a few minutes of discussion, uh, this lady, she's a broker and a buy, her expertise is a buyer's agent. So she was very uh, smart. She, she understood what I was trying to do. And then she convinced her sister and her brother-in-law that this would be okay. Right. That's good. Good job. So Buyer that's what team. happened. That, 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 that is super. R.C., are you there? Yes, I'm still here. Uh, is this oh, Stan? Okay. Uh, yeah, it is. How are you? I'm doing fine, Stan. Good. It's so glad to see you excited, man. It's wonderful to see you do this. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's y'all's uh, help, uh, the momentum that you all created. I pig- piggybacked on it, and it's finally paying off. Yeah, I, I'm especially uh, I'm especially real proud of you because you took you took whatever little bits we gave you and you ran with it, and yes. and then you know we'll help you get through the next section you know and not have to worry about it. So that's Thank that's the way that, that Tim works. He gave me a little bit of information and I'd go run, you know, and then it's like, uh oh, now I'm stuck, and he'd say, well, go do this next. So that's what we're doing with you, and it's working really well. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, so I would be working do on this. Basic. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stan. I, I would do something with this agent. I would ask them if they have any any listings that they've had for quite a while that haven't sold yet that might want to consider doing owner financing. So okay. they would be bringing you the seller instead of, and you can find the buyer. 
I see. I'm saying? Yeah, she, she well, wanted I'm... me to tell her, and she said she would take care of the buyers. Right. Yeah, and the the buyers is the is the um, is the easier segment of the of the deal. The sellers is a little trickier than the buyer. But I've got a realtor that's up in Humble that that he and I met, and I said anybody that you have that you've listed for four or five months and it looks like the house isn't going to sell, let's talk about doing some owner finance on that. And so he I brought see. me a deal last week that we're working on now, and that 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 worked out really really well because we, we can put out signs and find a lot of buyers. I see. Okay. Okay. So, I'll so up on try that. to double. Yeah, try to double up on them if they've got buyers and see if they can they have sellers too. Who knows? Right, and that's a very nice area. I think there should be a lot. I saw a lot of deals in in our instant lead generator. That's oh, perfect. Yeah, we did great. Good for you. Proud of you. Thank you. I, I, I'll stay in touch with this uh, a new flex option that I got today. So I want to translate that into a deal and help that elderly gentleman that will help me build my credibility in the area by helping him. Right. That's good, and you know, when after you help him, you get a you get a a letter of testimonial from him, and to get, get a picture with him, and the and, and and the picture with the buyer as well, and start to build your build your your uh, uh, testimonial um, binder. Right. That way, when you deal with other agents, when you deal with other sellers, you can show them that. So that's good. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate awesome. all your assistance so far. Oh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. We're so happy. You know, it's uh, n you know, n nothing makes uh, Stan and I more happy than uh, you know, than seeing you guys out there, you know, doing these deals. And so, you know, we'll we'll do everything in our power to uh, to help you. So, good job. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Stan. Yep. Anytime, man. Appreciate it. It's fun. I right, oh, okay. I'm gonna mute you out now. Uh, or okay. Do you have any more questions for him or comments for him, Stan? No, sir, I'm done. Thanks. All right, cool. All right, that was good. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, so excited. That's pretty awesome. And, and that's how it is, you know, when 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 you when you just go out there and just get one flex option and start marketing that house, and I'll guarantee you, you you'll have that same of excitement. Um, that uh, that that you that you hear in RC's voice here, and you know, what, that's what happened is that once you market one house for sale, you can have buyers, you can have more sellers, you can have, you know, you, you're just gonna end up with more properties, um, and that that's the that's the nature of our business is that once you get into action, you know, and and that momentum kick in, it's like a snowball effect, you know, it just roll down and the snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's exactly what happened, um, and um, and so you know, just uh, just um, you know, push your fear aside and kick it aside and says, you know, you know, you know get, go to a doghouse for now. I, I got I gotta go to out, you know, I gotta go and and and, um, and do at least the deal. So fear, you can come back later, but for now, you know, I don't care for you. <laughs> I, I gotta go out there and get some deals. <laughs> Okay, hey, Tim, where are we going to go next? Um, you tell me. <laughs> Stan, you're controlling the <laughs> webinar, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost control about, about 21 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to keep, I'd, I'd like to keep hearing good news is what I like to keep hearing. I mean, that's okay. good news well, is always great. If we've got anybody else that's got some great news, I'd love to hear it. Right. So anybody, anybody have uh, some good news you want to share? Okay. Don't be shy. <laughs> it's uh, you know, just uh, just uh, make sure you share with us any progress that you uh, that you are having. Share with us so we can, you know, better help you. You know, if you don't have anything to share with us, um, then we really can't help you. You know, that's that's just the nature of this business. Is that you know, is that uh, as teachers we can only do so much. We can only you know, teach you and, 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 and help guide you, but we can't go out there and do it for you. You still have to do it, and once you do it, you have to report to us so that way, um, you know, you have to report to us so that way, um, you know, that, 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 that way we can um, um, know how to, be how to then continue to guide you, okay? All right, um, 
All right. Robert said he has some ops to share, so let's uh, unmute Robert. Robert, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Uh, j just like everyone else, uh, I'm really excited because uh, th this past weekend, uh, you know, myself and along with my partner, we put some time in and trying to get some deals to work. Um, and we, we ran across at least three that are each homes that are already paid off. And the sellers are willing not only to do um, carrybacks, but they're also willing to um, do uh, contracts for deeds. And so now we're just trying to figure out how do we structure this? Because they still need a little bit of cash, but they're more than willing to be flexible in terms how, of how how much cash do they need? It, it, one was talking, and I shared this with Sam the other day. One was talking twenty percent, um, so she's willing to carry back eighty percent. But we may be able to creatively structure that. Um, the other one is um, his was more in dollars. I don't have my notes here in front of me, but it's more his terms are more in dollars. Um, it wasn't really a percentage. Um, so it, we're still at the beginning stages of this. I don't have all those things okay. firm. Okay. What, what's the condition of the property? Oh, they, you know, they're, they're great. Uh, one was built in 2001. It's a fairly new home here in, uh, outside of Chicago um, in, in the Plainfield area. And the lady owns it free and clear. But we did come across something last night, myself and my partner, Anissa, um, and she's online as well. Um, where we found that the taxes on the property were sold uh, uh, just recently. And I think it was for like $6,000. So we think we may have some negotiating room there um, to deal with this, to work with that lady. And the other gentleman, his property is, is much um, smaller in um, the money that we're talking about in terms of uh, acquiring it or buying it from him is a lot less in terms of his cash offer. So so we're just trying, we're pretty excited about it, and these are our first deals, and we've submitted them already, so we're just trying to figure out which way to go. Right, um, right, okay. The, um, the, other, the other kind of creative thing out of that is that we, we both have minimum knowledge and some training and, and note investing, um, so we may, we may also be able to structure a note, at least on one of those deals, um, and still create another form of income off of that. And I know that's something that we haven't really talked about with, with you, Tim, but um, yeah, I know it's possible. Well, well, I mean, which is, you know, it's, it's good that you brought that up because you can then actually um, structure that with the seller and says, okay, look, you know, we can structure the owner financing and we're going to sell the note at closing. So technically you're not going to carry anything back. So let me ask you this, if we can do this for you, what's the least amount you would take on this house to make this work? You know, knowing that you're not going to carry, you're not going to have to carry any mortgage back, that uh, we are going to kind of find a buyer with a, with a down payment and right at, at closing, we're going to sell that note to someone else. Right, and that's, and that's what we were talking about as well. And we have to really figure out how to make sure it's priced right uh, be, and make them aware that it will be discounted, but at least they're not sitting on the market for another year trying to sell the property. Right. Right, and you know, Robert, that's money now or money later. I mean, that's if they need their money right now, they can they'll take that at a, at a discount. Right. So um, that that's where we're at with those couple of deals, and, and and actually, I think we have a, two more pending. That's pretty similar, and, and and quite frankly, we didn't think we'd be finding properties where they already paid off, but. Um, we got kind of lucky with the first few, and hopefully uh, we can get these these pushed through. Right, that's good. And also, too, you might want to, um, you know, anytime. Uh, uh, and, we, and we did submit these for partnership because we want to make sure that we learn from this experience as, as well and not try to take this on ourselves. So we did submit these already. Gotcha, okay. Um, uh, all right. Um, yeah, what, what you want to, well, no, let me, hold on, let me collect my thoughts here, because uh, my wife did, just brought me some flowers. You know, anytime a seller owns free and clear, you want to give them, you, you want to give them multiple, diff you know, you want to give them multiple offers. So, so, so you can, you ask them, okay. 
Or what if you don't have to own or finance it? What is the absolute least amount that you would take for the house for an all-cash deal? So you want to know what what they'll take for a cash deal, and then you 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 know then you also want to know okay well if you do have to own or finance it, um, you know then then what's the least you would take there, and and what's the least amount of down payment? Uh, but the the um, you know the point is that uh, the more down payment that the seller expects. Uh, the you know the, the the lower the price, and so so let's say um, let's say for example the seller says well um, let's say the seller is trying to sell it for a hundred thousand okay, and says okay the lease I'll sell this house for is a hundred thousand I need twenty thousand dollars down, um, and so it's like okay well what if what if we can't find a buyer for a hundred uh, 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 for twenty thousand down but we can find a buyer for 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 ten thousand dollars down, uh, would you be fine with selling them the house for a hundred and five thousand dollars? So that way you end up getting five thousand dollars more for the house, but still allow allow the buyer to buy to to get into the house with less down payment. Oh, okay. okay. Or, or or let's say a buyer only has five thousand dollars down. So well, what if they only have five thousand dollars down? Would you sell it to them for a hundred and ten thousand dollars? So that way, now you make more money, but you make more money in the back end, and it will be easier for the buyer to get in on the front end. Got it. So, so, so you play around with these numbers, and you give them, you know, uh, different offers and different options, um, and, uh, and 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 then so that way, when you go out there and you market for buyers, you know, when you market for buyers, you have more options. You don't have to only find a buyer that has twenty thousand dollars down, or else the deal won't work. Okay. One of the deals was kind of kind of unique as well, um, where the gentleman owns the property free and clear, and we believe he he bought it, um, you know, from a foreclosure or whatever. That he has a buyer in place already. But they need to do something creative, and he doesn't know how to really just structure it. So he's he's allowed us to come in. Mm -hmm. However, the person that's buying a property uh, needs to do about um, eleven thousand to fifteen thousand dollars in repairs, and they don't have that right now. So we're trying to figure out how to really bring this deal together. The gentleman is willing to do a contract for deed or do a flex option. Um, but his concern is, okay, if I do this, how is she going to get the repairs? Because she doesn't have the finances to do the repairs. Um, and I'm, we're just not sure how to bring this deal together. Uh, um, I, I, I think I missed some parts here. but um, So you, you, you have a seller. The seller has a buyer. The buyer's, Is the house currently vacant? The, yeah, the house is vacant. How much in repairs does it need? Eleven to fifteen, eleven thousand to fifteen thousand. Okay, so so there's major repairs. It's not just you know cosmetic stuff like paint, and, paint and carpet. Uh, yeah, yeah, he needs some some plumbing. Yeah, he needs some major work done to it. Uh, but but the price of the purchase is roughly about twenty five thousand, and um, is what he's selling it for. Um, I believe he said he had an appraisal for seventy five thousand. So he's willing to, uh, you know, uh, take well, a huge cut. Why don't we? Why don't we just wholesale the house instead of trying to put in a on a, a first time home buyer in? Because see, yeah, it's not well, eight thousand dollars that the first time home buyer is going to qualify for. It's up to ten percent of the price. Okay. So in, so in this case, it's only twenty five hundred bucks. Okay. You know, so so rather than trying to sell it to. Um, a first-time home buyer may be selling it to an investor that can fix it up. Okay. Um, you know, or or if you can find a, uh, a a a different buyer and sell it for a little bit more, and you know, find a buyer that 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 they do have money to put as a down payment. So let's say you're going to sell it for, let's say you're going to sell it owner financing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm I'm just gonna throw out some some numbers here, but uh, uh, you know, let's say you're gonna sell it for you know thirty five thousand, and the buyer has 
um, has you know has five thousand dollars that they can at least fix the plumbing and and fix it to where it's livable condition and start to move into it, you know fix it yeah where it's livable and and move into it and then you know, continue to fix it as they live in there something like that that might work um, if the house is worth seventy five I I'm, sh- I'm you know I'm 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 sure you can find contractors that um, you know that 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 do have some money to fix up the house and can afford to fix up the house and live in it, and um, you know, and then after they finish fixing it, they can they have the option to either sell it retail or continue to live in it and maybe refinance later and cash the seller out. Okay, that brings up a, a very good point because you know, we, we were sitting here initially trying to help out this this buyer, and I guess I guess you kind of helped me think through this that we'll go right. Was just trying to do a wholesale, but put this buyer on another deal. I mean, I know ideally she wanted this one from a price standpoint, but she because because she can't do the repairs, another opportunity may be more suitable for her. Right. She, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, and, unless she can borrow money from relatives, or you know, borrow money from credit card, or borrow money somewhere to fix up the house, then she's fine. But if she can't borrow that money anywhere, then you know, that's kind of tough. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Good job. Yeah, I like that. Lots of lots of action. Good job. Stan, you have any Thank other comments much. or questions for, for Robert? Well, no. Robert and I have talked a little bit over the weekend or a little before the weekend. He and I have Skyped back and forth some, and so I kind of know what he's doing a little bit. And, uh, He's real excited and doing great things in Chicago, man, knocking them dead. That's that's incredible. Really, really fun. Real okay. fun. All so right. uh, Mike's got a question about yeah, the AK program. Yeah, Mike, right. Um, Mike has a question regarding the uh, the uh, the 8K joint mentor program. Um, Mike, you should have a welcome call, uh, a welcome emailed, and uh, if not, Joshim will resend it to you. It, it has the replays that you need to um to to watch there's uh I think there's like five different videos that you need to watch and that will that will get you, that will get you up to speed on where we are so uh watch those videos and 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 on these calls that we do uh these calls are for uh you know uh, um these calls are the coaching calls to to help you and propel you forward you know and so so um you know just watch make sure you watch those uh, those videos in your welcome email okay Right. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Donna and I will Skype each other about her questions. She and I've already talked. Okay, so you don't need to unmute her anymore then. Uh huh. Mm-hmm, we're good. Okay, and um, here Judy said, "Can we talk about my sellers that I want to get flex options from?" Sure, Judy. Let me unmute you. <coughs> All righty. Thank you, Tim and Stan. Stan, I have uh, two sellers. Um, especially that um, they seem rather motivated to sell. Uh, in the one case, he's a disabled man named, um, or should I give his first name or no? You can give his first name. I don't think anybody okay. cares. <laughs> okay, well, his first name is Gregory, and he has four properties. Um, I initially called about one of the properties that he um, has on the market to rent, and when I asked if he'd ever considered selling, um, he immediately uh, wanted to drop the whole idea of renting. He, he says that um, he can't do, do owner financing, and he really would like to sell all of them. And he would just need, um, let's see, a, a few days for him to move, move out himself. Um, he said everything would be available as soon as possible. Um, and uh, Amy wonderfully uh, I let me know how to find values on due deals. And so I did that today for these properties. One of the properties um, has a value of zero. There, there was zero uh, value on Zillow and also on cyber houses and um, no tax assessment, so I'm not really quite sure what's going on about that, but he said that um, he 
owns two of the houses free and clear. On one of them, he has a $30,000 mortgage. On the other, a $60,000 mortgage. Um, uh, when I, I use do deals to find the value, um, let's see. Um, so what was it? Well, uh -huh. it, you know, if, if it's so, if it's showing zero, that means that it yes. pumps, it, it it can't find that address. So, so oh. when, when 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 that's the case, you just ignore that, and and you have to find a different way. Uh, it could be the way you type it in, maybe, or or but um, you okay. know, you, you 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 can also try to find the tax appraisal uh, value. Uh, forward and see if you can if you can find it there. But uh, have you ever asked him what is what is the least he's willing to accept? Y yes, and yes. Pay all cash and close quickly. Yes, I do. Well, he he said that he wants uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollars for all four of the houses. But when I checked to deals about the values, um, let's see, it looks like two. Looks like it's about two hundred twelve thousand dollars that um, for, for the three for, for the three houses that that um, do deals value um, website could. Um, okay, so 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 um, so what is that per house? How how much on average did you see each house was worth? Um, they range from sixty thousand to eighty thousand. It was like sixty one thousand. Okay. Seventy-one thousand, right. eighty thousand. Right. Okay. Okay. So then, you know, so, so let's assume that they are worth, um, you know, seventy thousand dollars each. So mm -hmm. seventy thousand times four—that's two hundred eighty thousand. So that yes. wouldn't work based on the amount that he's asking. Yes. So he's, he's probably asking retail price for it. Uh huh. Um, and so, has he ever tried to sell it before? Uh, let's see. I let's see. I I asked him. He, he said that he had just put it up for rent in the past few days. He said that he had um, let's see the the one house that was up for rent. He had painted and rehabbed it. Um, and let's see. You know the reason why I wanted to know if he had ever had this these houses for sale before, so that way. I can ask him. It's like, okay, well, if you had it for sale before, you know, you know, why do you think it hasn't sold yet? Mm -hmm. Maybe because your price is too high for this neighborhood. Yes. And so, and so you, you you have to ex you have to get him to accept the reality of it. So, for example, you can check on these value and you say, well, you know, based on the value that I'm I'm searching, you know, each of these houses are only worth around, you know, sixty something, seventy thousand dollars each. And so yes. there's no you know, I, I, I don't think that I don't think that the buyers would be willing to pay that much for it. especially not a cash buyer anyways. Yes. So you know, so so um so if if a if a cash buyer comes along and you can say it this way if this is if this is going to make you feel more comfortable but you can say, well, if I can find a cash buyer and he can close quickly, say within a week or two, what is the absolute lease you would accept? Yes, and I I did ask about the lease cash, and he he said that this one house that was up for rent, he said it's worth um, twenty thousand dollars, but he would take one hundred ten thousand. But that was a house that I found on our due deals um, value. Um, the value is about seventy-one thousand. So, right. so I should should I just? Yeah, should I, I, I I think that he's being unrealistic. I don't. He, yeah. he probably doesn't realize. Um, he probably doesn't realize the 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 true value of his home. And um, in this particular case, you know, and is he willing to do owner financing or not? I asked him. He he said he cannot do owner financing. Okay. In this particular case, I would move on. Okay. I, I wouldn't spend any more time on this. I think you spent enough okay. time on this thing. All right. Okay. And then, um, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> In another case, um, the landlord has called me a few times, um, and we we played telephone tag each time she was calling. <laughs> uh, 
uh, during the HHTV and LDTV. But uh, in fact, she, she just called uh, now during this phone call, and I asked her if I could call um, like in another 45 minutes or so. So we'll, we'll be talking this evening. But um, well, you can call them back. You can call that person back right now on the on the line. If, can you do three way, and we we can all listen in. And uh, three three way three way. Um, oh, let's see, I'm not. I, I'm afraid that, that I would do, do something with, with the phone. I, I've not done many three-way calls. I, I have, but um, would, would I tell her that, that other people would be listening in, or? No, you don't need to. You just, you know, just say, um, you know, just say I have some, uh, I, I, um, I have, uh, um, I have some associates with me on the line as well. Uh, however, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, we have a business meeting right now, and and we wanted to follow up with you on on your deal, and so, you know, so that way, it, uh, uh, if uh, if she says something you need help with, I I can just jump in and and help you out. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me, I had told her that I would call her in about in about forty five minutes, so she might be surprised if I call. Um, and her, her voicemail has been full, so I've not been able to leave that message. I can see if she is. Um, I, I told her just now when, when she called a few minutes ago that it was uh, full, so I've been called. Let's see. Let me okay. see. Yeah, okay. and, and, and this is applicable to all of you, not just Judy here. But, you know, if you have any deals, or if you have any sellers that you, <laughs> that you, uh, that you want to talk to, you are more than welcome to bring to bring that phone number onto uh, onto these webinars and make a three-way call, just learn how to do three ways. You, you guys must not have been, uh, uh, um, you know, in, 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 in the old, well, I guess for me in the old days, back in the, back in uh, middle school and high school, I used to be on the phone like, I don't know, probably five, eight hours a day. And so oh. I used to do three ways a lot, do these oh. three-way calls, talk, talk to my, you know, my, um, you know, girlfriends and guy friends, and <laughs> well, I, <laughs> yeah. So I'm, uh, you know, so I, I'm, I'm always curious. It's like, how come people don't know how to use three way? You know, how, how did you, how did you go through your high school years and your middle school yeah. years? <laughs> uh, well, uh, Tim, maybe if I if I um, got disconnected from this headset, I, I um, let's see. Then, then I. What what telephone number would I use for the for for you guys? Let's see. W would that be uh, when when you click over to use telephone, it will give you the phone number to dial in. Oh, okay. So use telephone. Yeah, on that audio mode. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> she'll be back in a yeah. She'll be back in a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty then. Let me see here. Um. Did any new questions come in that I missed? Uh, yes, sir. There's two or three on there. All right. Kevin said, uh, I made I made two hours of phone calls today, got several mobile homes, and one lady has a two-story mobile home. Uh, Kevin is attracting a lot of mobile homes. Kevin, where are you? What Did what city are you calling that you're getting so many mobile homes? And uh, if, if, it's a, if mobile home is big in your area, then that's fine. We can do mobile homes. Uh, you know, one yeah, of my friends, Doug Otter's book, he loves mobile home. I mean, hey, Kevin. Uh, okay. I'm in San Diego, and I was calling. Uh, I got lots of mobile homes today. I've never even heard of a two-story mobile home before. <laughs> it's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? <laughs> two-story mobile home. Uh, and the, the lady called it a manufactured home, and I was, I'm still confused on the name manufactured home, whether that means it's really mobile or not, but she well, said yeah, she moved it. <laughs> well, manufactured home are not necessarily mobile. The, for me, the difference between a mobile home and a manufactured home is that a mobile home sits on a, uh, a, a, a trailer that has wheels on it, and a manufactured home actually sits on blocks. So the impression that I got was that she she had moved it that it that it sits on a on an axle so right and so it, if it's on an axle then I would still I, I would consider it as a mobile home but if it's a two story I think I think she might have uh, put blocks on it 
by then. I don't know, but um, regardless, it doesn't matter about the terminology. But uh, yeah, well, um, in, in in your case, I mean, even mobile homes are uh, quite expensive, and so so it's okay for you to do mobile homes. You don't need to uh, ignore them. Yeah, she said it was worth about eighty thousand dollars, and she was willing to sell it for thirty because uh, she's behind on her uh, payments on the uh, the park, and the park was about to foreclose on it and get her a mobile home. She'd rather have uh, some money than none. Oh, okay. But the thing that's the problem is that she says she's halfway through a renovation of it, so it's not really livable at the moment. Ooh. She <laughs> says the upstairs bathroom is uh, still still needs some work. The granite countertops that she ordered needs to be installed. Does she own a mobile home free and clear? Uh, that that yeah, that is the impression that I got. She owns it free well, and clear, but she's behind on the the, well, the then, payments for the space. Then then maybe she would be willing to take even less for the mobile home, and you can then wholesale it to another investor who is going to come in and fix it up and sell it retail. You know, if she's behind on the park rental, that's not very much. So it's it's not going to cost that much to to bring that current. Yeah, I mean, in her about, point of view, where she is now, she may rather have five thousand than no thousand. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, anything's better than nothing right now. Go so, ahead. So even though she's asking thirty-five thousand right now, that won't necessarily be the lease that she'll take for it. Okay. So I should uh, get a flex option with that and start marketing it and see what I can get. Yeah, I, you, I, I would, I would number one, find out what's the absolute least that she would, you know, that that she would take. So you can say, look, if I can, you know, um, if I can find, if I can find us a cash buyer that can close within seven days, what's the absolute least you would accept for this, for this mobile home, knowing that it needs a lot of repairs, and so, you know, find out what what that amount is, and then also find out. How much it's going to uh, take to reinstate, uh, you know, her, her her arrears for the park, and then um, and then try to wholesale it. So th for this particular deal, you you know, it's not going to be retailing; it's going to be wholesaling. Yeah, from what she uh, told me, it's about a thousand dollars a month at this park, and she owes two months' rent. So. Okay, so then yeah, that's only two thousand bucks. That's you know plus some back payment, so that's pretty cheap. So you know, so um, um, y you know, if they start out asking thirty-five thousand, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she goes down to twenty thousand, and even down to tw uh, fifteen thousand. Uh, that have happened you know a lot, and um, and you know the closer they are to um, to getting evicted or getting or closed on, the more motivated they'll be. And so you just got to find out what's the absolute lease that she'll take and then, you know, and then work it from there. Okay. On another, sure. another mobile home I called, they had a, the lady was willing to sell it for 25, but she wanted a $12,000 note on it. She was willing to carry back about $12,000 of it. Uh, I was just wondering, is that, Common, or can you get a can somebody get a loan from a bank for a mobile home, or how does that how does that work? Uh, say, say that again. I'm just uh, from what I understand, it's hard to get a loan on a mobile home. That's correct. Well, I mean, it it is hard, but it's not impossible. Well, right. And and you know, and so. Um, so you know, depending on her credit, depending on how much she used to have in her bank and stuff, um, and and especially local banks, they'll work with her on that. But you're saying that she still owes twelve thousand? Is 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 that correct? Or? Uh, this other lady has oh, this other owns lady. the. This is a different different scenario. Okay. The, this other lady owns the uh, mobile home. It's worth about forty thousand, and she's willing to take. Uh, twenty-five thousand down, which I thought was a lot, yeah. and carry back the rest. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, yeah, that is a lot. Um, and um, and you know, I mean, it, it's possible that somebody might 
you know, that might definitely not an investor. It's going to have to be a retail buyer, someone who's going to buy and live in it. Um, they might be able to do it, but um, yeah, but I, you know, I I would uh, I would ne negotiate with her a little bit more and see. You know, and uh, you know, it it doesn't hurt. You know, if, um, it doesn't hurt for you to go ahead and get a flex option and start marketing and find some buyers. So that way, even if um, you find no buyer for this particular property, you can you can work with the buyer that 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 comes in and find them a different home in in that area. Okay. And I had uh, one real uh, single family house that I might have a flex option. The guy said to send it over. So um, it's uh, it's a horse property. <laughs> it it has a room for horses and a uh, a track for horses. So mm, okay. Well, and the, in San Diego, really? In San Diego, yeah. Wow. Uh, well, it's it's on it's in San Diego County. It's not in the actual city. Oh, okay. And uh, it's the guy says he's been trying to sell it for a year. Started at five hundred and fifty thousand. He's down to three hundred and fifty thousand. And says he's uh, willing to do a, a, a rent to own or some kind of situation like that. Okay. So I thought that I thought that was good. That's good. And what's the absolute lease he would take? Do you know? Uh. He said he just lowered it, and he was only willing to take what he had just lowered it to, three hundred and forty-nine thousand. Oh, okay. okay. Otherwise, he'd uh, he'd just wait and uh, uh, put in some uh, not repairs on the property, but some upgrades. Right. And then he'd try to sell it again in the spring. Right. Okay. So so he doesn't have a a a big motivation yet. So. Um, so yeah, so, um, you know, just get a flex option back and start marketing that. Who knows? Uh, Stan might decide to buy it and move out there and buy some horses and raise some horses. So <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had horses. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> I've been there. I awesome. think I think you sound like you've got some things going, man. That sounds cool, Kevin. Yeah, All good right. job. All right, thank you guys. Very good. All right, thanks. Well, Tim, you want to keep working down these? These I see Judy's back too. Or can we keep? Let's go to Judy well, next. Is that okay? Well, um, I really want to make some calls. Yeah, um, listen, so, Judy, going to make a call right now. Yeah, let's do that. It'll be a lot more helpful for these guys listening in. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I I didn't get real far with Suzette um, because she and her husband had not really thought about selling. This property. I called them when they had have this property up for rent, and then when I asked if they would, uh, if they've considered selling, um, she said that in fact just the other night, just the night before, she had broached that um, possibility with her husband, and so she asked if she could, uh, if we could talk later after she'd had a chance to talk with her husband. And, so that's what she and I have been playing phone tag back and forth. And so I, I don't have some of the basic information that you want, like the, the least cash, because they hadn't even really talked about what what value. But uh, when she got back to me, um, uh, she left in a voicemail that uh, it sounded like um, they would want $175,000 for it. Um, due deals average estimated value is a hundred three thousand nine hundred forty three dollars and so in a case like that would you just say that it's like a hundred four thousand dollars and then for say um uh if she wanted like <clears throat> quick cash then that would be forty to fifty percent of about a hundred four thousand dollars or say forty two to fifty two thousand dollars do you just estimate like round figures instead of the one hundred three thousand nine hundred thirty three right. dollars. Okay. The, All right. The, the the answer is yes, you, you, you do just figure the round number but but don't make them any offers. Number one uh, you know, rule number one is you always ask them for the price. Uh -huh. So you ask them, okay, if I can get you you know, if I can get you a buyer that will pay all cash and close quickly, what's the least you w willing to accept? All right, so always get a price from them. Now you, sometimes you're gonna. Most sellers will tell you what that price is. 
some sellers, on the other hand, just said, no, you know, you tell me a price. I don't, I, I don't know. You give me a price. You're calling me. And when when that's the case, then, then, then all you have to do is come back with them and say, well, you know, based on what you're telling me, what if, and make sure you use the word what if, what if we can only find a cash buyer that's willing to pay between uh, forty to fifty thousand dollars for this house? Would you consider that? Okay, so so you would even drop the two thousand from forty two thousand to fifty two thousand. You would you would just round it to right. say ten thousand and say forty to fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Right, right. You don't need to be exact then, because you're you're just you're just you 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 right now you. What you're doing is you're not trying to make them an exact offer. What you're trying to do mm-hmm. is you're just trying to get a feel for how motivated they are, getting a feel mm-hmm. for for what they are willing to accept. That's why you give them a range of numbers and not the exact number. Okay. Um, I'm wondering, uh, when I call Suzette, uh, and assuming that I get her instead of a voicemail box, it's full, um, what what is the reason that I would say that you're on the call with us? Or just say just say uh, my my associates on the line with me were having a business meeting and I wanted to follow up with you and talk about your health. Um, Can I say that you're our acquisitions team or something? Or? Um, it's much easier for them to understand if you just say okay. business associates than acquisition associates, team. Okay. That sounds too right. complicated. Yeah, that sounds okay. like uh, right. what are you trying to do? <laughs> okay, but, uh, all right. Just say my associates on the line with me. Um, yeah, it's it's no big deal. But you know, but like I said, just remember, uh, you know, re, re, uh, number one, your first goal here is to try to uh, try to get an owner financing deal. And your second goal, if they're not willing to do that, is trying to find out what's the least amount that they will take for 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 all cash quick close. And if and if they not if they're not willing to give you that amount, and you know then that's when you say, well, what if, you know, what if we can only find a buyer for, you know, around this much? You know, would you consider that? And 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 using that what if game is not it's not about making them an offer. When you you know mm-hmm. imagine you Judy you you have a house you're selling right now, mm-hmm. and 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 so what if the the real estate agent comes to you and says hey it looks like we might have a buyer, what if this buyer only offers you between um, you know two hundred fifty to to uh, to uh, three hundred thousand would you consider it? Mm-hmm. Would you get offended by that? Uh, no. No, exactly. And so, so that's how you would approach these sellers, a uh, very similar way, is you use these what if game because you're not trying to give them an exact offer. You're just trying to field out for how motivated they are. You're trying to field out for, you know, around what amount are they willing to sell the house for? And they might say, no, I'm not going to do forty to fifty thousand. Uh, the least I'll take is sixty thousand. Like, okay, cool. At least I have a number to work with now. Okay, and then um, so, so I, I can tell her that I have, uh, should I say, a couple of associates on the call, you and Stan, or will will one of you be silent? It doesn't silent? matter. Just say, I, just say I have a couple of my associates with me on the okay. call, but you don't need to worry about them. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to follow up on your house here. Okay. Because Stan um, and I may you, not. You know, Stan and I might not say anything at all. It depends on the conversation. If we feel like you can handle it, we're just going <laughs> to let you handle it. Maybe I can tell her that, that uh, if I can't answer uh, something that she asks, that maybe you, you can. Or uh, Right. So, okay. All right. Well, I will see if I can get a hold of her. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anybody have a seller you would like to call? Um, and um, yeah, yeah, so, um, you like to call and, and, and make a three-way? Why don't we just make that a regular feature here? Just bring your bring your sellers, and we'll just do it. Right. We'll bring, yeah, definitely them. bring your sellers. You know, bring your sellers, bring your buyers to this call, so that way you can call here. And you, know, if you need help, Stan and I are here. We can talk to them. So as long as you three-way them, we'll be good to go. But um, um, okay, well, um, 
uh, who wants to volunteer to to um, to talk to a seller today? Who wants to do it? And I will three way somebody for for today, so Stan can practice his three way. <laughs> well, actually, we'll get Stan to practice his three way right now, and if it doesn't work, then no. I'll three way. No. How about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, uh, Richard. I raise his hand. Uh, both Richard and Kevin volunteer. So, uh, Stan, can you uh, try to three-way somebody and uh, let them talk? Just pick oh, sure. a lead from uh, do deals and. Uh, oh sure, gosh yeah. Let me just show you my screen. We'll just do it together. Uh, where did Judy go? Is she coming back? Um, I think she's going to try to call them. So if she does get a hold of them, she'll just have to uh, uh, message us and we'll unmute her. Okay. Uh, who's going to do this? Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee Colony is just uh, from the Dallas area. Oh, okay. I thought it was... Uh... Okay, now I'm going to push the go button and put you on hold and dial this, Okay. Hey, if you don't hear from me for a while, throw me a life jacket, all right? Come get me. <laughs> all right, Kevin, I'm going to unmute you here. Richard, did you uh, took your hand down? Did you chicken out on us or what? <laughs> Let me see here. Where's Kevin? Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. All right, I unmute you. Okay. Kevin. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Well, Stan is dialing right now, so I think he's on the other line. Well, wait a minute. I screwed it up. i got to go back. Hang on. Okay. I'm coming back, okay? I, I did it on the ring. Hang on. Oh, this is a new lead. It was only submitted on the 20th? Uh, yep, pretty new. A few days. Looks like a newer home built in 2001. Are you still there? I'm still here. I can't hear anything. Let's try another one. Did it work, Stan? Okay, so Tim, when I hit the button, it's still ringing, but I don't hear it when it rings over here. You're gonna, you gonna uh, me on the off the training wheels here? All right. So, so, so. Um, number one, uh, does your your phone has a flash button? Say it again, please. Does your phone have a flash button? Oh come on, this thing was built back in the Stone Age. Uh, <laughs> okay, so so look at it. It doesn't have a flash button. So how did how did how did you click over to the other line to hear the dial tone? It, it has like a talk button and an end button. Then then it has to have a flash button. Look at it again. It's toward the bottom of the phone, probably. It's a handset. Well, right? since I, I mean, I don't know what a flash button is, so. Um, it, it'll say flash. Um, see, see mm -hmm. if it'll say. Well, how how did you click over to the other line? I just pushed the green button again, and it clicked over. Okay, you push the green button, and it click over, and you hear a dial tone, right? Right. Then, uh huh. Okay, then you dial the number, and once it started to ring, then you uh, you should be able to click that green button again to get you back over here. That's what I've been doing. Let me try it again, okay? Okay. Is this a cell phone that he's using? Uh, no, he's using a home phone, I believe. 
I'm using my cell phone. phone. I can't make it go. I can't make it work. Oh, are you <laughs> using your cell phone? Are you using your cell phone? Yeah. Well, yeah. cell phone normally have a different kind of button. There uh, there should uh, there should be one that says uh, 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 conference or uh, join. Uh, Mine says join. join. Okay, join. There you go. Join. So did you click on that okay. once the phone ring? Last time, okay. okay. No, it it rings and it's ringing, but I push the join button and it doesn't it doesn't keep ringing. I guess. Hmm, this poor guy I probably called him three times by now. <laughs> I'll find another one. I'll find another one. I was going to say I don't know too many home phones that have a green button on it. Okay. Uh, you guys just keep going. <laughs> okay. Let's go this way. You need to start dating again, uh, Stan. Once you start dating, you learn how to use three-way. <laughs> Bobby might beat me up for saying that. Um, <laughs> all right. Hello. 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 This is hey, Hello. Chris. This is Chris. This is Stan. I was talking about the house you have for sale. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, what do you want to know? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at an internet ad, and so I know where it is and all that kind of stuff. Just tell me it's three bedrooms, two baths, that kind of thing? Yes, yeah, three bedrooms, two baths. Has a pool in the back, uh, 1,800 square foot. Okay. I mean, no, I guess it's the neighborhood mainly. I mean, this street's mainly older people. I mean... I guess as they're kind of died off, I guess the younger ones are coming in, but mainly the older people. Right. You're right there at 183 and 377. Okay, I see that. So yeah. tell me, kind of, um, kind of how come you guys are selling your house? Because that's a nice neighborhood there. I'm just getting out of the city, getting away, and I'm things start working in Oklahoma, so uh -huh. kind of moving up north a little ways. Not right. Oklahoma, but just moving up north. All right, and and uh, what are you asking for your house? What I want it. I owe ninety nine. I owe ninety nine. Basically, what I what I owe on it. Okay. And what do you think your house is worth? Well, give me an idea what you think that would be worth. Well, I mean, I know a house is going around here. One twenty, one twenty five. Right. And they're smaller houses, 13, 1400 square foot homes. And what kind of repairs do you think your house would need? Uh, it needs carpet. Okay. I mean, that's probably the, the big thing. I mean, the only reason, basically, I said the only reason we're selling is I'm fixing to go up north. We've right. lived here for 10 years. Right. So you probably think carpet and paint's kind of what you need then, huh? Yeah. Now, would you consider doing any kind of rent to own or owner finance, something like that? Yeah, that's what we're actually thinking about really doing. Okay. More or less, a, like a lease to own type situation. Yeah, I mean, I'm a real estate investor, and I and we do a lot of those. And um, gosh, we can bring some buyers to you and get this thing put put gun done pretty quickly. Um, yeah. What, what about what are your payments on the house? Ten is a thousand sixty three a month. And you'd want to get about that much for it, or do you need quite a bit more than that? What do you, what do you think? No, I mean, I just want, I just basically want to get out from underneath it. And Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, we, we do this all the time. I, I'm not a real estate agent, and I'm certainly not trying to uh, to list a house or anything like that. I, I, can, uh, I, can, I can come in and bring some buyers to you, and I've got a huge buyers list that would, would have a strong interest in that house. It's in a really good area. So, yeah, I mean, that's what I've had... <laughs> probably, hey, you're probably number eight. I talked to. <laughs> right, right. Well, you, you ended up on yeah, you ended up on a on a pretty good computer list here. Um, and what what is, is everybody else doing? What give me an idea of what they're asking you to do or, or, or? Well, I mean, no, basically, I mean the same thing. I mean, right. We've talked to people that manage properties. Uh, you know that we buy houses. Right. 
they come over and looked at it today, and, you know, they're not, you know, the, I guess they really don't do the least on two thing, but I guess the subject to sell or whatever, you know, they come in, take it over and fix right. it up, and, you know, he said he'd take it. But, I mean, if y'all put somebody in this house, how would that work? I mean, well, what we do in Texas is we do a wraparound mortgage. The um, the rent to own and lease to own are, are pretty tricky to do in Texas, and a wraparound is quite a bit simpler. And I'm not a big fan of of, um, of bringing in a tenant when I live out of town. I'd rather have somebody that that's going to take really good care of it. And I've got yeah. a couple. Well, of I mean, tenants. I'm not living. Yeah. I'm yeah, not actually moving far away, but right. But that's what I we just don't. Do. Want, I don't want to rent it. Right, and that's that's the um, when you rent it, then you you know when the toilet breaks, you got to come over there and fix it. And so, yeah, uh, with this owner financing thing, with the wraparound mortgage, these people would would own the house, but you would have a lien on the house. So let's say they don't pay for it, you just foreclose like a regular house. And in Texas, that's a that's a really good thing to do. So it's it's just, it's simpler. Uh, it seems like in Texas to get these um the, to foreclose than it is to go in and and um and kick them out when they're trying to. When they rent the house, yeah, I see the foreclosure signs everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, so you would basically turn into the bank on this one. You know, you've got a you've got yeah. an underlying mortgage, and we would close this at a title company. I've been I've been using lawyer title up in Keller, and uh, which is right around the corner from you, up, up on up on 377 and uh, South Lake Boulevard, up in that area. So, yeah. So what we would do then is that attorney would create another mortgage on top of that, where you would become the bank on the house. And those work extremely well, and they protect you, and they protect the, uh, the buyer as well. But um, I mean, it just works real, real, real well. Okay. Well, I mean, how would the down go and all that good stuff? And well, we'd have to just talk about how much down you want, and and you know, we can do that eight thousand dollar tax credit as well. So what we like to do is find somebody that has a little bit of money, and uh, they need to be able to pay the closing costs. So we can do that little bit of money to you, and then we can take. Of the eight thousand, or we can talk about it. It doesn't much matter how we how we work that out. We can certainly work the deal out together. Okay. I mean, I didn't know if you got like a percentage of it, or I mean, if well, we say they put ten thousand down. Uh huh. How much would come to me? Well, how much do you need? That's that's let's figure out from there. Let's say that we have ten thousand down. Then how much would you want out of that? I mean, I'd want ten thousand. I'm sure you'd want ten thousand too. But how can we? Okay. I mean, if you're saying ten thousand, okay. <laughs> so how can no, we work, I mean, uh, work out? Well, I know I'm fixing to be out of about six grand moving into the other house. Right. So I mean, at least somewhere. I mean, basically, the the lady we bought the house from, she wants to come, and. Do the owner finance type thing, uh huh. You know, and us because with the, I you know, already put the stuff down the other house. We close in February the twenty right. ninth. Okay. <clears throat> and I can keep this house, but I don't want to. I want to get right. rid of it. Right. I mean, I just want to. We got, I guess you could say, a wild hair up our ass. Uh, Last weekend, went looking at houses and found one we like to sign a contract on it. Here we are in this situation. Now. Absolutely. So let's let's just then, um, uh, if it's okay with you, I'll, I'll send you our, our little agreement. You look it over. It's, it's just something that allows us to come out and, and uh, bring our buyers out to your house. It's absolutely no commitment on your part. If you find somebody before we do or you – choose to go with this other lady, then that's that's all good. You know, we want you to sell your house and if we can yeah. be involved in it, great, that's great for you know, great for both of us. And if not, you sell it, hallelujah, you did good. So okay. yeah, I mean y'all don't do the subject two things or we do the subject two things and, and uh if you'd like to talk about that, I'd love to talk to you about doing subject two. I mean, we do okay. subject two a lot. I've got a bunch of houses I've done subject two with. But and, I mean yeah, I mean basically right now that's just our last uh Last resort on that one, right? So uh, what I'd want to do is is send you our little agreement, and it's really it's, there's nothing to it. You just check it out, and uh, let me follow up with you tomorrow sometime, 
And uh, okay. let's, let's see if we can get it put together. If not, then we can always talk about subject two because those those are fairly simple. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and do that. I'll talk with you tomorrow a little more. All right, Chris. I've got this as, as C Sanders one at live dot com. Is that your that's your email address? Perfect. Yeah. I'll I'll send it off to you. Okay, Chris. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Did I did I start talking too early? You guys still there? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin was supposed to be talking. <laughs> well, I know Kevin. I was waiting. I was going. He's like, hello, hello, hello. Well, I better jump in here. So I jumped in. Is that all right? Can you even hear me? Yeah, I I, no, I, 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 I heard, heard you, but uh, but I think Stan was a little bit too impatient. <laughs> I, I thought well, that was Stan yeah, saying hello, hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, it turned out all right. I, come over talking and I, I, was, I was waiting for the introduction or something. Oh, my associate's on the line here or something. And uh, okay, yeah, that I know. never happened, so right. I didn't want to well, confuse the guy. Well, well, next time you know, you just start talking. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah, they, you know, it turned out to be a good deal. Um, uh, you know, I, and, and notice his motivation has, has changed, okay? When he first submitted the lead, which is only a few days ago, um, he submitted it for a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. He his asking price was one hundred and fifteen thousand, and he he even tells us he has his uh, mortgage balance is ninety nine thousand. Uh, his you know uh, monthly payments is uh, um, uh, ten sixty three. So he's you know he's um, he's he's motivated enough that it's only been his submitted date here is uh, January seventeen. So it's only been nine days and he's willing to sell it for what he owes on it already so this guy has a lot of motivation he's willing to go to uh, to to walk out of this deal um, you know Stan was nice enough to even uh, to even ask him well how much down payment you want on it I wouldn't have been so nice I would have said well you yeah. you said you sell it for what you owed on it you want to sell it for 99,000 that's what we're gonna sell it for and um, you know, and 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 um, you know, and and so so that we can make sure we we get your mortgage payment covered, so you can move on and and move into your new home and um, and you know have this home, uh, you know, this home be behind you. But uh, look, it has the swimming pool too. You guys see that? It's pretty cool. Yeah, it looks I'm like sorry, I switched out. I'm going to the next one, man. It's like TV. Let's go. Okay. Well, <laughs> well anyways, the, the 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 point being is that. Um, um, th there's a lot of potential in this deal, so so certainly you know um, Stan's gonna take on this deal and um, and continue this thing. So, but uh, but yeah, that's how these calls are. You know, it, you guys might think it's really practice, but we're actually um, you know we're, we're actually trying to turn them into real deals. It's not just uh, it's not just fun and play. <laughs> ah, this well, is nice already. Let's do another one so I can actually right. do the phone call. Uh, Okay. All right. Do you know how to right, do the three-way, Kevin? I was just I, I was confused when I started or when the phone call started. Oh, okay. I was waiting well, for some kind of cue, and I thought Stan okay. was the one saying uh, hello. Oh, okay. Well, if you say if you hear hello, that means that it's not Stan. It's not me. <laughs> so. Okay, I got it. <laughs> All right. So, are you doing the three-way, Kevin, or you want me to? Uh, I'll I'll do it. Okay, you do it, okay. Kevin. He looked here, Tim. Well, this guy, he's uh, pace too high, laid off, and downsizing. Right. That's good. That's where he is. Yeah. He's pretty motivated. He owes 130000 mm -hmm. on it. He got first loan payment of 67 So, you know, when, when you see a lead and it has all of these details, it tells you a lot about their motivation. For a right. seller to submit uh, their loan information on, on the Internet, um, that that by itself tells you how motivated they are. Yeah, he's looking to get out of this. Right. Did you he dial? Needs to work on this email address. Kevin, did you dial? I'm sorry. I'm supposed to dial. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm what? sorry. Dang. I, am I dialing? <laughs> I'm gonna put this now. Hang on. But when you hear when you hear hello, you're up. Okay. Okay.
you know, a lot of you guys, um, uh, or, or some of you, I should say, some of you are, t are shy about asking seller for, for their mortgage information. Um, you know, I mean, we, we, we ask for it on our website. So, um, you know, so, so, um, so it means that, that when, you know, don't be shy about asking them for the, 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 the least that they can do. More up. Leave callback okay. number, press 5. I just move on. Okay, Hello, over. this is Kevin calling about your house. I'm sorry, is it been cut off? Kevin, shoot on your bed. <laughs> so you hung up. Okay. I, I hope so. <laughs> Check your phone. <laughs> Here's another motivated one that uh, divorce situation and selling it for what she owes on it here. So, yeah, um, anytime they said they'll sell for what they owed on it, it's very structured. It, it's very easy to structure um, all kinds of creative deals with them because they they just want out. They they don't want to have anything to do with the house. Next. I've got goosebumps here. <laughs> I'm waiting for the phone call. <laughs> All right, uh, forty thousand zero says sixty seven thousand. Okay. Sounds like Four, six, seven, six, five, three. Seven. Let's go to the next one. Kevin, dude, I took your good one. I took the first one. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I should have jumped in there earlier. Uh, let's, uh, let's not do the one in Cleveland. That's about 60 miles from Dallas, Fort Worth. Kevin, where are you from? San Diego. Oh, you just told us that, didn't you? Yes, I did. It's beautiful out here. Okay. I hear it's pretty Fire warm in, uh, in Texas right now, too. Yeah, here we go. Let me try that one again. I don't hear anything yet. Yeah, me neither. Hello. Hi, this is Kevin. I'm calling about the house you have for sale. Yes. Is this a good time to talk about it? Oh, yeah, that's fine. 
Um, um, can you tell me a little bit about it? It's a three bedroom, <clears throat> two bath. Um, it's on a to it's uh, the house sits on a lot and it has two additional lots. Um, it's pretty much lakefront. It's about a block from the lake. It's got a three car carport, um, storage building, um, a back deck. It has window units, um, built in uh, stove, built in oven. Um, it is all electric except um, there's uh, you use a Dearborn heater. So that's the only thing that runs off the propane. I'm sorry, what was that last word? I didn't hear you. Um, it's it everything's electric except oh, it does use um a, it does use a Dearborn heater, um, okay. which is the only thing that has propane, um, and it has a fireplace. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a real nice area. Um, it's uh, probably. Mm, a half a mile from the country club um, okay. here in Whitney. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much about it. Um, well, that sounds nice. Uh, why are you selling it? We have moved. Um, right now we have renters. Um, uh -oh, so it's, you're not living in there? No, we're not. Okay. Is it time to get rid of it, or, or what, what's going on? Well, yeah, we're just part of being landlords, I guess. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, well, no, they're, they're great. They're great renters. It's just, it's too much of a hassle, I guess, for us. Oh, okay. I, I understand that. So, how much? But, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, how much are you asking for it? Um, we would like to get um, 75 Okay. Um, I think the lowest we could probably go is going to be $70. Um, uh -huh. um, there has been the bathroom, uh, the master bathroom, uh, floor, and laundry room has all been redone. When was that? This has been a year and a half ago, I guess. Okay. Um, it has a dishwasher. Um, also, it, a new electric box has been put in. The outside electric uh, box. Okay. <laughs> I was um, ask. I was wondering. Um, are the Tenants, the people who are in there, are they going to stay in there, or are you planning on uh, telling them they're they're moving, or how's that going to work? Yes, yes, this has been known since they've moved in um, that it would eventually be sold. Um, that if they wanted to, they could try to buy it. Um, okay. But this is no. They knew this from the beginning. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I, I, I'm just curious. You say that they're they're good tenants. They're that they are good tenants. It's just we're just ready to sell it. Okay. Um, and they can't uh, they can't buy it at this point. Well, they're not sure if that's where they want to stay. Um, her husband is uh, going to be trying to open up. He's going to culinary school, and he's oh, going to open up his own restaurant. And he's not sure if this is the area that they're going to want to stay in. Um, to have that business, um, so they really didn't want to commit, um, you know, into buying something right now. Okay. Well, uh, how much do you think, uh, what, what are the houses in this uh, area selling for? Oh, <laughs> way more than what we're asking. Oh. Um, there was a house two doors down that just sold for 250000 Um there's another house across the street that I'm sure it could get about the same easy. Okay. 
and uh, when when you're selling this, uh, are you open to do any kind of like owner financing on it, or? Well, um, I don't know. I, I really wouldn't want to. I guess we still owe on the house. Oh, um, how much is that? We still owe uh, right at a little over sixty-five. Okay. And uh, I'm an investor, and I pay cash sometimes. If I could pay uh, cash okay. and close quickly on this, what would be the least you would accept for it? it? It would have to be, you know, what we owe on it, you know. Um, okay. And, I mean, we, we would like to be able to get, you know, a little bit extra um, because of the work and stuff we've put into it. Um Okay. Uh, when you say a little bit, I I understand that. You know, um, uh, I'd probably say if it was bought cash with you pay paying on clo closing costs. Is that is that what you said? Yes. Um, I'm gonna say. Sixty-eight. Okay. Well, uh, why don't I send you over a little agreement that we have? And uh, okay. Do you have an uh, email address? Yeah. It's uh, all lowercase. Okay. And it's uh, Jessica. And it's J E S S I C A. Okay. Peoples. And it's P as in Paul, E E, P as in Paul, L E S, at yahoo.com. Okay, I got that. And uh, my name is Kevin Campbell, and I'm going to mm -hmm. send that over to you. And uh, then I'll give you a call back to make sure you got it. Okay. Okay. That'll, that'll be great. All right. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Kevin. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Are we clear, Stan? Well, I'm afraid to push, you know, push the button. Are we clear now? I heard it looks like, so I'm going to assume that we're clear. <laughs> but uh, good job, Kevin. Yeah, you, you did very well. You uh, listened to her. Um, the, the, the only thing I suggest for you to say instead of saying owner financing, um, because, you know, the, the, the minute you said owner financing, she's like, no, I don't want to do that. I still owe money on the house. Um, you know, I, 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 um, I, I would... Uh, the way I always approach these people is I'll start I'll start out by saying, you know, would you consider doing rent to own on it? And the way we structure these rent to own, it's very similar to owner financing. Um, however, you don't have to pay off your mortgage. So you we'll, we'll keep your mortgage in place. You're gonna start acting like a bank, and uh, and you know the the buyer is going to pay you monthly, and you pay the, your bank monthly. And so, you know, and, and so, so that's how I explain the owner financing. So that way, you know, because because whenever we say owner financing to most people's um, understanding, they think that they're going to have to pay off their mortgage and and hold that note. Oh, I see. Well, I was I was getting. Uh, I thought I did the first part pretty well, but then I, I made a couple of mistakes and I started getting really flustered. I was. <laughs> oh, you did fine. I didn't even hear your mistake, so I don't think. I think I think you overbought it. <laughs> well, then I, I started asking her about her tenant. Why doesn't he buy it? I'm, I'm like, oh, that's a stupid question. <laughs> no, that's not a stupid. That's not a stupid question at all. That's a real all. question. That's that's a good question. Right. <laughs> you, you know, because I, thought, I, I was going, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking, well, why don't the tenant buy it then? If you want to sell it, so I was glad you asked it. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I just didn't want to put a bad uh, a thought in her mind that she didn't need me. 
No, well, no, not necessarily. A lot of these people, they just don't know any better, and they, they, they're they thinking that in order for the tenant, current tenant to buy it, they would have to get a, get a new loan, and they can't qualify for a loan. That's why they won't buy it. So that's how these sellers think about it. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, but... Um, but if we can get these sellers to agree on a on a rent to own, then we can always go back to those tenants and say, hey, you know, if you have any down payment, I'll let you in this house. You get to you know live here, and and now you own the house. You're not just renting it anymore. So that you know that's what I would do. But um, all right, let's. Uh, well, uh, but uh, yeah, good job. Like I said, the only thing I I would change is just um, you know the. The way I approach them about the owner financing, I think it's a little bit um, too early, and uh, she backed out of that really quick. But oh, this is one of those deals that, if if um, yeah, when when uh, when Stan call her back, it's a pretty easy deal to come into a rent to own based based on what I'm getting, based on her mot motivation. She just want to be out for what she owes on it. She, you know, she's like that. She's like that other guy that. Uh, yeah, you know, that um, yes, they're, they you know they all hope to make some money on the house, but uh, but, but you know but uh, but whatever they can out of it, they would love to do that. And if you guys know this, the seller's motivation, and, and this teach you a lesson. You see, when when this seller submitted this uh, this uh, lead to us on uh, on January 9th, she was asking eighty thousand dollars for this house, and so. It's only been less than 20 days, and the price dropped from 80,000 down all the way down to what she owes on it, which is 65,000 dollars. That's a 15,000 dollar drop just just in a couple of weeks. So that tells you how these sellers' motivations are. So you can't, you know, whatever you talk to them about now, and they they give you a price now, that won't necessarily be the same price a week from now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now. Their motivation change. And so that's why it's very important for you to follow up these sellers and um, and uh, and get the deal pushed through. So, well, okay. I thought Kevin was great. I mean, I mean, Kevin, were you nervous at all about it? Oh, I was extremely nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't sound that way. But, uh... No, we, see, you you did a nice job of faking it. You faked it at a pretty high level. You did good. Yeah. <laughs> and so, even though you were nervous, you you took that step with a handsome courage and go send this girl a flex option. Get this deal wrapped up. Okay. Go find some bird dogs in the Dallas Fort Worth area to help you now. Get this thing done. Good for you. Yeah. That's terrific. Right. Yeah. That's uh, that's good. So definitely go do that. But let me write down the address before you before you take off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Write it down. And then you can search and in Tim, the deals member area. Yes. Right, okay. Tim. I just pulled this off of the Dallas Fort Worth Dude deals. Uh -huh. I, I, I tell everybody on the live deals TV that we have that's that's the coolest thing about these features. I can go anywhere in the country, and I'm not paying an extra fee or anything, and and uh, and I can do deals. I mean, just, all you need is a telephone or a computer. It's great. That is correct. Great. Yeah, and um, you know, folks. I mean, you just got to make these calls. You know. It's, there's no, there's no, there's no magic to it. I'm just making these calls. <laughs> just gotta. We made two or three phone calls, and we're sending out two flex options tonight. Right. I mean, that's yeah, we only talked to three people total, right? Or something like right. that. Right. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it's not a, it's not a very difficult thing. Um, and um, you know, so make sure you you do that. But anyways. Um, let's. Uh, we, we're gonna wrap up our call now. I um, I don't think we missed anybody's question, um, did we? I don't know. It's, uh, oh, I don't but, know yeah, but uh, if if we did miss your, uh, let me see here. Aussie said uh, are the videos about how to do the 8K JV deals available in due deals members area? Um, yes, it's in the uh, it's in the um, the university area. Uh, Joshim, can you can you um, uh, Give uh, RC or, or maybe send an email again to everybody where all of the replays are, so that way they they they, uh, they watch that. Um, okay, but uh, um, okay, we, we we did the webinar on that. I think it was um, three or four weeks ago, I think. So, but anyways, 
All right, so uh, let's just wrap up this call now. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Kevin, for for your courage and uh, and um, you know playing along with us here and calling. Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I liked it. I yeah, liked, it's like getting a flex option. Yeah, exactly. So you know, when we get off the phone here, let's uh, keep you know go and keep on making your calls. And uh, I encourage all of you guys to uh, to bring your leads next um, uh, on on the next webinar. Okay, bring your leads on the next webinar so that way you can you can make the calls and uh, and Stan and I will be here to try to try to help you out, uh, and and um and you'll be able to get some practice on it. And you know if if you don't bring any lead and we we ask for a volunteer, just make sure you raise your hand and volunteer. And uh, have some fun with us, you know. But uh, also, don't don't make sure you get on the Happy Hour TV, and make sure you get on the uh, the Live Deals TV as well. Uh, Happy Hour TV is a uh, you know it's a show that I do that teach you how to first be rich in your mind, so then you can uh, realize and be rich in you know in your external world, I guess in in your life. And um, and Stan. Uh, Basically, his his whole show is about calling sellers, and so that's uh, that's what he does for for the entire show. So make sure you make to Stan's sure you get show on this the, morning. Say that again. I listened to Stan's show this morning. Good. That, yeah. That's that's why I was able to fake it like that. <laughs> ah, gotcha. That's good. I I, good I really like I really like your guys' shows. It was uh, it's very, it makes me able to do this. Cool. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, well, uh, that's the purpose for the so, uh, shows, and so I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, Kevin's, right, Kevin's going to be a, Kevin's going to be a guest on there tomorrow, isn't he? <laughs> well, we'll, if, we'll if you make you a guest. <laughs> I'll give you a warning though when we do that. Okay, Tim, I'm sorry, I hopped in there. Okay. <laughs> that's okay, um, but. Um, yeah, and any of you guys want to get want to get on and be a guest on on any of those shows, you're more than welcome to uh, more than welcome to do that. Okay. All right, uh, Stan, do you have anything else um, before we wrap no, up the go call? Go make those calls. Go make the calls. Uh, have fun with it. Just have fun. Yeah, just make the calls. Have fun. Don't worry about it. You know, and uh, just uh, just get the basic information, just like what uh, what Kevin did today, and um, and then let us know about it so Stan and I can help you further. Okay. Okay, everybody, you have an awesome, awesome one, awesome evening, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.